Thank you uh, for the introduction and, uh, and good afternoon. Sorry. It's great to be here at the 1st of May Labor Day and to talk about farming, to talk about agriculture and to talk about challenges farmers are facing, often very labor intensive, the unsung heroes of our days. I work for a company called Anglo American and we are a global FTSE 100 mining company with 95,000 people around the globe. And we produce the critical metals and minerals globally, which are driving a cleaner, greener and more sustainable future. And I will talk today about how to innovate at scale. Uh, in an issue which is probably the most pressing, which is about food processing and what people forget, what is behind it, what's needed to be effective in food processing, which is fertilization. It is said that adding nutrients to the soil are absolutely necessary and that 50% of people live on this planet because of mineral fertilizers. It is absolutely necessary to create the amount of food that is needed. It is fundamental to our survival and we have grown used to taking it for granted. To be sure, for making fertilizer more sustainable is a challenge that we need to address. Imagine a world in 2050 where we need to feed 2 billion more people around the planet. In the next 40 years, we need to grow as much food as we have grown in the past 8,000. And that is a challenge that we need to, we need to face and we need to, we need to solve for. How to do that? And the past has had its impact. Emissions from highly chemically processed, um, processed uh, fertilizers had an impact on, on the environment. We see soil degradation. It's often a topic that is forgotten about. Already today, we know that 33% of Earth's soils are degraded. And that is only increasing. We are expect expecting by 2050, 90% of soils become degraded. So we need to find a different, a better solution to produce more food than ever before without harming and impacting soil and environment the way it did in the past. And we think we have found a part of the solution. And it's this rock I hold up here. It is a rock that is 260 million years old. It is actually formed when an ancient sea evaporated over millions. This piece of rock contains four of the six nutrients that plants need to grow. Potassium, sulfur, magnesium and calcium. Where did I get it from? I got it from the world's largest resource of a mineral called polyhalite. Where is it? And it is right here in the UK. To be precise, and you can see it on the map, in North Yorkshire, near the coastal town of Whitby. The polyhalite seam is a mile underground and it stretches from the North Yorkshire coast right through the, uh, through the North Sea to Poland and to Germany. We know there is 2 billion tons of material available which will be sufficient to feed the world for potentially 100 years and more. Why is this important and why is this valuable? Because polyhalite, this mineral, is the first scalable solution in 75 years in crop nutrition that will be uh, brought to market. As my countryman said, Albert Einstein, if you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. If we continue on this path for the next 70 years in terms of 
crop nutrition in terms of fertilization the way we have done it in the last 70 years, we will not be right. We will get it wrong. We will not be able to solve the trilemma that the industry that we are all facing. Producing more food with less environmental impact and not harming the soil. Actually optimizing and improving, improving the soil. It's not only about the fertilizer which makes us so proud and so fascinated about this innovation at scale. It is as well about the way we will mine it. Look at this picture. What you see on this picture will be Europe's deepest underground mine. What you see at this picture will be the biggest fertilizer mine in the world. And all you see is actually perfectly fitting into the landscape. All you see is a barn and everything in terms of mining is buried underground. All the shafts that will unearth this mineral are completely underground. And it's not only that. The way how this product, the 13 million tons we target to produce, are going to be transported to the, to the port of Teesside is underground through a 26 mile, 37 kilometer long, uh, long tunnel and conveyor belt. There will be no truck, there will be no rail that will get the product from this total underground structure to the, um, to the port. That for me is a phenomenal, it's a great British engineering story. It's a great British innovation story. And it will be a great British success story. The 13 million tons per year mine is the largest private sector investment in the north of England. Already today, we employ more than 2,000 people with 1,000 more jobs to come in operations. It is expected to contribute two billion uh, pounds a year in exports. That is our innovation story. That's what we are proud of and what we are determined to deliver. Now, we need collaboration. We need collaboration with you, with partners to make it happen. The previous agricultural revolution occur occurred within the space of a generation it is now up to us, for our children, to create the next one based on more innovative thinking, more creativity and more collaboration. Myself, my team and whole of Anglo-American is absolutely determined to play its part. And we welcome the opportunity to work with partners, to work with you who have the same passion the same wish and the same ambition and determination. Thank you very much. We have five more minutes, so I try to unlock and I have time for questions, which apparently works. You scan the QR code and then you type it in. That's the way how in the world of silent uh, presentations, questions get asked. I, I wait for a couple of minutes uh, or a minute for questions to come up. That tells me there are no questions. A question is coming up. Okay. How does first question is how does the polyhalide get turned into to fertilizer? Is there innovation here? Yes, there is. It is a no waste product, which is absolutely fascinating as well. So this mineral will be converted into fertilizer that can be spread on the field.
The way we do it, we grind it and then we recompact it, no chemical processing involved, to produce industry standard granules that then will be exported ar around the world. It's an organically certified product. So we will use binders that are organically certified so that we can use it on the fields around the world in places like Brazil and the US where um, a lot of fertilization application is done through dry blends. Second question is, can you talk more about its impact on soil health? It's a massive theme and I could probably not in the remaining four, four minutes. There are a couple of elements of properties of the mineral that make it very positive on soil health. The one is, it is a multinutrient fertilizer solution. So it contains four of the six macronutrients, as I said. Um, the second is, it is low in, low in chloride. So often, one of the nutrients is potassium. Often potassium comes in MOP together with chloride, which could, which could have a negative impact on soil that does not um, contain chloride. The second one, it is a sustained release product. So the nutrients that are there are released not in a typical salty flesh way. They are released over a prolonged period of time. Actually, in the same way the plant needed. So that is in itself, in this distinctness of the mineral, that is an, a further property that has a positive impact on soil. Calcium is part of in it. Calcium, known by agronomists, one on one on agronomy, has a positive impact on soil structure um, and, and improves the, the soil, health, uh, soil health as well. Um, and then there is an, an, an another element in it, which is the saltiness level. It's pH neutral. So a lot of properties in its combination have a positive impact on the, on the soil as a, uh, as a holistic system. After the 30 million has been excavated, what is the plan, um, the plan for the, the area? Look, as I said, it's two, two billions. Um, every year, once the mine is up and running, and in full production, it's 13, one, three, which, by the way, just to put it in perspective, is the same amount as Canada exports, the coal country of Canada exports as... As, as potassium at the moment. So it is a massive, as I said, it's the biggest, the largest single source fertilizer operation. Two billion of this rock is there that we will mine. So it will be many, many, many decades before we will run out. If you mine underground, you need to leave a lot of pillars so that you don't have any impact. So you mine only actually one third of the, of the ore and two-thirds will stay there. So once it's finished at the end of the day, it will, the barns will be probably dismantled and it will, and that's the nice thing, it will stay, the picture will stay as it is, um, as it looks like on, on, on the image I showed you. What kinds of collaboration? Great question. Do you need to bring this vision to reality? Look, the collaboration goes from we need partners in terms of distributing um, the product to the farming system. We need farmers that have an innovative mindset to test, to understand and to help us to understand the product. We need partners in terms of consumer product companies that are creating the environment in terms of, yes, sustainable food production matters. We need research partners. We need partners that support us on the political, on the context setting. So there are many, many, many partnership opportunities. The invite is there. Please reach out to me, to my team, to discuss how can we work together to change this ecosystem from 70-year-old 70, 70 thinking driven to a new one, to a different, more sustainable, more productive farming ecosystem going forward. Many, many capabilities are needed that we look to partner in. Where comes the energy from the, from the mining from? 
we are looking into. Obviously, it will be we are aiming because we want it to be a low carbon fertilizer. We aim to get it um, to get green energy, green green power supplies. We are working on it. How do we do we structure it? But our intent is to make it as as uh, green as possible already in the production. Soil health, but also carbon pro uh, footprint. How is it different? Not sure whether I understand the question. Um, the carbon footprint, as I said, in production, we try to drive it to as little as possible, given the way that it doesn't need chemical processing itself, the way that the mine is located very close to a port, in itself systemic, means it is low carbon in production. There is one another property I haven't spoken about, which is nutrient use efficiency. If you apply this, nutrient use efficiency of nitrogen and phosphorus, so the other nutrients that are needed, goes up. You require less of those, which has a positive impact on carbon. Last question, how cost competitive will it be and how much will it uh, cost to, to, to produce? As I said, we are looking into it. We believe we will have a very, very cost competitive solution and it comes from the structure that it will be a zero waste product. Everything we will mine, we will put into use. And this in itself has a systemic benefit over many other minerals where you, for example, in copper, you only get half a percent of everything you mine into use. You can imagine that structurally the cost competitiveness of a zero waste product is significantly higher compared to other products we have seen in the world. Thanks a lot for all the questions. I might have overrun by two minutes. Thank you very much for, for having me and it was a great pleasure to talk to you about this great innovation at scale. Thank you. <laughs>